So, uh, I'm here at coming on East Ash People's TV with uh, Tom McGee, the National Officer for the Fire Brigade Union, the Lead Baron, and the Regional Secretary for the TUC. So, I, why should we oppose the Trade Union Bill? Uh, the Trade Union Bill I mean, should be opposed and is being opposed by you know everybody that's got anything to do with the trade union movement. It's unnecessary, it's undemocratic, there's no need for it, it brings in restrictions that nobody else faces and it interferes in a democratic process where there's no suggestion that that same interference or same level of thresholds will exist anywhere else and there's no other Western democratised world that actually brings in such, um, such legislation as far as voting is concerned. It basically turns around and says that everybody who don't vote is an automatic no vote. And by turning around and doing something like that, you're squandering the democratic process in itself. There's vast other areas as well. No doubt um, John will come on to some of those, but basically, as I say, it's unnecessary, it's undemocratic, and it's really not warranted. No. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting that, you know, we, we're still using the language of the trade union bill. I think we should be very clear that this is an anti-trade union bill. This is a bill that's designed to, to stop working people being able to organise in their workplace in order to protect themselves. Because that's, that, that's what the Tory government don't want to do. They don't want working people, you know, collecting together and getting collective action to, to try and improve their, their lot, basically. And, uh, and if you look, for example, this idea in the public sector that they're going to take away Chekhov, government, uh, the government have been arguing that this is going to save the public sector a whole lot of money. I think they said £6 million. Pounds. Well, actually, we've already proven that that's wrong because most trade unions already pay the administration costs for Chekhov. So it's, it's absolutely nothing other than putting a further administrative burden on the trade unions and trying to prevent unions from. Uh, allowing their members at the workplace to collect their subs, you know, easily in the way that they, you know, we, we have all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, pay by paying uh, towards charities through, through, through check off, and that's not being threatened. It's simply the trade union uh, dues that are being threatened. So, uh, you know, we need to oppose this because the bill is designed to stop working people staying together, organising together and fight for fairness and equality. So, how then, from meetings like, like what we've had here tonight, how, how, then, how then do we fight back? How, how do we intensify the fight back? Well, um, it's, it, it's important to get a public um, perception to run campaigns that you've done in East Staffordshire this evening. I have to say it was one of the best attended that we've had around the, um, around the, around the region, so congratulations for mobilising that amount of people to come and speak about it. And then it's about really putting the pressure on as far as politicians are concerned. It's about putting the pressure on as far as um, the House of Lords is concerned in order for us to dilute um, damage and delay as best we can. Because we've got to recognise that we haven't got the numbers as far as the House of Parliament's concerned. There was a general election uh, a, few, a few short months ago. Um, so what we've got to do is use every mechanism that we can in order to make sure that we apply as much pressure as what we possibly can to take away the worst elements um, of the bill and make sure that people understand that there's a trade union movement. That trade union movement is a force for good. You know, all of the time that we're going through this, people are saying we're being attacked, we're being attacked. Yes, we are, but don't ever take away from the fact that trade unions are there and they're a force for good. If we weren't here today, we'd be created tomorrow. And people should be proud of what the trade union movement does for this country, because it is, as I say, a force for good. Oh. Yeah, and I think what we've got to do in order to intensify this battle is we've got to be better organised. We've got to get out to the workplaces and get the people who are not in trade unions, we've got to get them into trade unions, we've got to take the message again, and sometimes it's about going back to the basics, it's about convincing people that our arguments are the right arguments, that uh, if we stick together we're stronger. Uh, we see the attack on tax credits for, for low paid, uh, most vulnerable families around in, in, in the country, and, and unions have, are, are quite rightly got to have a view on that. If we if we stick together, we organise better, we make get more people into unions and actually we've got to look at being part of the wider labour movement and that's looking towards who is the party that's going to get, who, who's the party we can reasonably expect 
to get rid of the Tories at, at the next election and it's got to be Labour. So I think that there's workers, we've got to realise what our role is in there and uh, get involved, get active. Um, you know, loads of people signing up now because of the new politics, uh, the, you know, the Corbyn uh, effect, if, if I can describe it as that. And that means that we, we've got to be active because you know, it's not just about one person, it's not about Jeremy Corbyn, it's about looking after ordinary working people who, on a day-to-day -day basis, they're struggling, they're working hard, and they're not getting the rewards that they deserve. So we need to be better organised, and we need to make sure our voice is heard. Is there a need for, if it came, if it came to it, if needs must, for coordinated strike action to show our disapproval? as a movement to this to this piece of legislation or to it if it became if it became law. Well um, no one's balloting at the moment, <clears throat> always proposing to ballot at the moment, on this legislation. So I mean one of the um, issues I think <clears throat> I mean the TC's made its uh, view <clears throat> through the General Council, through its Congress absolutely clear and I think it's it's the furthest a General Council's um, statement has gone as far as industrial action is concerned for well over 30 years. So let's be under no illusion that there's a serious uh, issue here and it's being taken seriously. I think the issue is then when we start to button it down, I mean look, you know, I've been asked the question about whether or not, you know, TUC you know, got off your knees, called a general strike, that kind of stuff about it. Yeah. You know, look, I mean, each individual union is going to make its own mind up in relation to whether or not it feels that it can deliver its members. When you push that button, then you've got one push and one push alone. Because if you get it wrong and you don't deliver, then you're going to push it again. And that's my point. If people are turning around saying we're absolutely confident the movement should unite around something and a cause like that, which wasn't, by the way, agreed by Congress, um, then, you know, OK, but you've got to make sure it's delivered. My view is, is that's not what we're uh, aiming for at the minute. It's not what we're focused in on at the minute. We've got a campaign um, that's dealing with the trade union bill. What's going to happen in the future? I mean, it's already been said by a number of leaders about making sure that individuals and, 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 and trade union members aren't exposed to the law by this legislation and they're protected by the trade union movement. And I think we're safer to be talking along those lines as opposed to talking about whether or not there's going to be some form of general strike. I mean, if that's the point that you was making, or if it's just about coordination, to me, it will depend on what the coordination. Yeah, uh, yeah. To an extent, I mean, general strike is, is one way of putting it. Coordinated strike action is. Well, I mean, you look at events like July the tenth of last year, when it was a mass sort of generalised strike action. That's the kind of it where it was coordinated amongst several different unions, wasn't it? Because um, the issue was the same. The issue was the same, wasn't Absolutely. it? Um, so that was probably more than that. A general strike seems to imply. Like effectively, like what it did in 1926, where mm. everybody shut, where it was shut down, they kept, and no, no, no one's balloting on the trade yeah, union. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly yeah. Like it. I, I think there's absolutely no doubt, and I'm sure the TUC support that, that we need coordinated action. That doesn't mean it's coordinated strike action, because we don't have to first jump to strike action. But we need to coordinate the opposition to the trade union bill, and I think that that's already been done. The, the, the most of the, the unions and right through the TUC, coordinated by the TUC and supported by the affiliates. We're all opposed to this legislation. Everybody can see that it's anti-trade union. It's not a, a trade union, it's not a bill that's there to support the union. So yes, we need to have coordinated action. And that may mean that it's a coordinated, you know, we've got on uh, Monday a lobby of parliament and that's been coordinated again and, you know, and, and trade union members from uh, all industries will be turning up to uh, try and talk to their MPs and speak against the, the trade union bill. I think, I think we, we need to start thinking about do we have to have a general strike? Because you know what, we don't have to pull members that our members are strike. Our members don't want to go on strike because when they go on strike they lose money. Mm -hmm. So we have to, but what we do have to be sure is that we can coordinate to protect workers wherever they are. And that's the challenge that we've got in the, in the coming years, whether this bill is passed or not. Where do trade councils go in terms of this? What role can they play in campaigning against against this legislation? 
Well, the, the East Staffordshire Trades Council has, has demonstrated tonight exactly what trades councils can and should do. I mean, I've got, you know, some trades councils a little bit in this. Um, East Staffordshire, you know, North Staffs, um, you know, we've got them all around the Midlands doing a really, really good job in, to what I see as being, if you like, the local branch of the TUC. The TUC at a regional level is going to be able to deliver in every single location where we've got uh, members, trades councils, and you're relatively um, a new trades council re-established in 2014, and over 50 people in a room tonight in Burton on Trent talking about the trade union bill. I think that is absolutely fantastic, and others should be doing the same. And I think that basically, you know, you, you, you're with others leading the way as far as that's concerned. I think it's the 17th event that we've had now uh, in the Midlands since the trade union bill was announced. So that's what trade unions should do, where the TUC at a regional and national level is coordinating its affiliates at a local level. I think the trades councils are there to make sure that we can bring people together, to make sure their voice is louder, bigger and stronger uh, in campaigns such as this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I and mean, I think the, the real important, you know, we talked about coordinating action and I think trades councils are in a fantastic position to help coordinate action because at a local level, that's where the, the local activists have got an opportunity to get sure. together and to, to, to talk about what's, what each of them are facing in their own workplace and whether it's to do with the, the trade union bill or not. So I think that you know the extension of that role that uh, trades councils can have is, uh, I think, as Lee says, is about taking forward uh, at local level coordination uh, of all unions together, making sure we know what each are doing and we can support one another. Whether it's whether it's taking collective action, I don't think it's that important. It's about collective support uh, is a much more important. Just a final question, um, and it's one that people tend to not like to answer because it's kind of hypothetical but looking into the, the crystal ball come May 2020 when we're back at the polls uh, where do you see the trade union movement? Do you see us having to oppose the bill? Do you see us having to work with what we've got? What sort of situation do you think we'll be in come, come May 2020? Well, whatever happens with this bill we'll still be here in 2020 and a lot of people are talking about the fight of their lives as if after it we could well not exist that's not the case trade unions are a force for good and what we do as i've said before if we weren't here today we'd be created tomorrow so make no bones about it 2020 we'll still be here and there's a general election as you're saying in 2020 and it's about us making sure that we've got the political opponents of the current government all in line to turn around and say that they'll repeal whatever is introduced because it is totally unnecessary it's fighting the battles of the last century and it's not really doing anything to improve industrial relations certainly uh, in this country so what we've got to do is make sure that we're in a good position not just with our natural allies in the Labour Party but with all political parties to make sure that we've got them ready to repeal and come up with a 21st century approach to trade unionism to collective bargaining and to the world of work because one thing's for sure this country is becoming more and more unfair it's becoming more and more unequal and that isn't good uh, for the future and the extension of collective bargaining has got to be spread in order to deal with that inequality and working people should be uh, able and confident enough to be able to join uh, trade unions and to be able to have their voice effectively um, um, given up work or, or, or taking forward at work and I mean things like access to workplaces as opposed to people having to queue in the rain to speak to a union because they're too scared to be seen speaking to them any other time because they've not got any recognition. They're the sort of aspects we need, a modern 21st century industrial relations out there which basically gets rid of really kind of political kind of you know uh, punishment tactics where they're fighting battles from years gone by. What we need is, is, is a forward looking uh, 21st century um, framework for industrial relations and collective bargaining, which is going to meet the challenges that lay ahead for the country and not be dealing with the ones that are in the past. John? Yeah, I would say that in 2020, our challenge is going to be to deliver a government that uh, is different from the one we've got. Because there is absolutely, you know, for those uh, in the trade union movement and uh, the labour movement that have been saying in the last 10 or 15 years that 
you know, in, in, from a political sense that, that it doesn't matter who I vote, they're all the same. I think what we're seeing now with this Tory government is that no, they're not all the same. That this, this government is, 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 is a class, it's an attack on our class and uh, we've got to make sure that we deliver a Labour government. I think there's no other option but in 2020 that the trade union movement need to be working towards delivering a Labour government. I think the fact that Jeremy Corbyn's been elected is fantastic. It gives us an opportunity to engage a whole load of uh, people uh, that you know, weren't previously engaged in politics or engaged in trade unions for that matter. So we've got to, whilst there's a huge battle in, in, under the trade union bill, now there are big battles out there for, for people who are not in trade unions who are facing tax credit cuts and, uh, and, and cuts to their services across their communities. We need to make sure that we deliver a government that is working for working class people. Surprise, John, Lee, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks a lot for being on the East Coast People's TV on our opening night.